I'm off. Cool. All right, guys, enjoy. Thank you very much. Um, yes. What's the... Okay, so... You're going to maybe change the laptop now? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be connecting... Which cable it's was It's connected that? on your laptop. Camera, right. It's oh, okay, right. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure that... Well, I mean, I'll get my shot in there. You don't need to shout, the microphone is just on the table. Okay. Let's see. <coughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Tom Breza, for those who don't know me. Uh, and for those who are online, I have no idea whether anybody is online at the moment. Uh, a few words before we will uh, join, we'll move on to the proper class. Uh, today's teacher is uh, our trusted and long standing uh, Tristan, and obviously, as well, uh, Oliver. Uh, before we'll move on to the class, a uh, few, few things uh, like day-to-day -day business. Uh, I have new batch of licenses, so if your license expired or is about to expire, uh, send me an email with subject Sea Lion, and inside the body of the email can you put uh, <coughs> your name, your surname and email address, and I will email you back the license. Basically, we need to keep the record of who is getting those licenses. So send me an email with these details and I will deal with that. Uh, the next thing is <coughs> uh, we need uh, uh, this year, well, since I started this project, I've set myself a couple of goals, yes. Uh, I'm happy to say I basically established, I managed to have like a two big uh, ticks next to my uh, goals. The first one was obviously make this group running, yes? I thought it was not, not possible. It is, you are the proof. I got really, I met lots of fantastic people, lots of, made lots of friends, which is amazing. <coughs> the second biggest goal I had for this group was, to, that's the reason we've been jumping so much, and I owe you big apology, uh, is because we've been jumping from side to side, is for me it was extremely important to have the ability to stream. Why? because there is lots of reasons. The, the, the main reason for me is, uh, my wife is working with lots of disabled people and I know how horrible life is for somebody who experienced some tragic situation. Uh, and for whatever reason, he's locked in a house, cannot get somewhere. So I had an idea, I'm learning, I created something like this, I can help somebody else uh, to basically to learn. Yes. So uh, for me, the mandatory was to stream this online so somebody can join. Obviously. Other people can benefit as well. If you're stuck at the work, you can't go because your kid is sick or whatever, what have you, you can still uh, tune in and for free basically get in and start uh, learning with us, uh, uh, be part of the class, uh, not only the online video us on YouTube. So that's the second, second, second biggest, biggest uh, uh, big take on my, on my list. The third one, the third one is, guys, you can, you can cover your eyes, you don't hear that, <coughs> is to get some extra a uh, way to, f uh, to pay uh, our teachers, yes? I don't want to go to, to, uh, to, to students and ask them for money. I don't want to make these this events payable because I believe uh, knowledge should be shared free. But obviously, each of these guys spent a lot of time preparing for the classes, committing their times and so on. They could do a million different things. Uh, to give an idea, I spent approximately between 10 to, 10 to 20 hours a week, yes? just to make sure this, this project is running. Uh, <coughs> I'm not talking about myself, for me the benefits I can learn, but for these guys I'm trying to find a way. So the, the, the most, the less intrusive way is to basically find sponsors. Uh, the sponsor, what we're offering for sponsor is basically ability to put uh, on our website, if you open our website, you see <coughs> on right side, there is a space for the sponsors, so put their, their, their names there, uh, allow them to, on our, uh, presentation, put their advert, maybe do a short talk during our class to tell something which is related to C++ and, and get to know us, yes? So that's what we can offer in exchange. Uh, so if you know anybody, let me know, yes? Pass the information, because that's the, the, the easiest way for me to make sure that we do some, a little bit more contribution than buying a beer or two to these amazing guys. Uh, so that's from there. Now, uh, hopefully a final, final, final uh, subject which I want to touch before I give the, 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 the voice to these guys is 
feedback, yes? We receive uh, very little uh, feedback uh, and we need a lot of feedback. The reason is why we need a lot of feedback because what happens, I'm talking between these two amazing guys, gurus, and they tell me, oh yeah, we will teach you this and that. And I was like, oh crikey, oh, I feel uncomfortable because that's probably too high for me, yes? But I don't know whether it's only me or is it everybody, yes? If it's only me, well, Tom, tough luck, get on with the, you know, sit with a book, read more <laughs> and get better, get better and continue with the level of the class. However, if it's not only me, but most of you are experiencing like you're feeling, like, oh, we're getting a little bit too fast, then we're wasting everybody's time, yes? Not only yours or mine, but as well these guys, because for them it's pretty much impossible to judge whether you feel confident or you feel good or we're missing something. So what we need from you <laughs> is feedback. I need, uh, I need feedback, uh, so I would ask you kindly if you could send me an email and say, uh, with the subject feedback, <coughs> after each class and tell me what do you think. Uh, first of all, the most important is, <coughs> is the, 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 the part of the, 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 the subject which we cover, was it too advanced, was it good, was it enough, yes? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, uh, <coughs> to influence a little bit the class in a way where we could do, let's say, let's say 10 minutes explanation and then we can repeat two, three, four exercises and then go to the next explanation which will take, let's say, another 10 minutes <coughs> and continue, yes? Uh, this is my idea. I don't know if this is the best idea, yes? I don't know if you will like that or if you will hate that. So please send me feedback so then I can uh, liaise it. By the way, we have, uh, usually we, we created like a system where we have, on Friday, we have a, a lunch, a working lunch. So uh, me, uh, Tristan, Oliver, uh, we meet up together, uh, usually it's in Moorgate, uh, and we sit down and we talk about, about the, ne the next class. You're very welcome to come in, but if you don't, if you send me feedback, then I can represent basically everybody as, as a group. Uh, so for me, that's pretty much all. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Spread the word. Let other people know that we are here, what we're doing. Oh, and as I say, one more word of apology because of the streaming thing. As I say, I'll have to change some of the arrangements. Now, <laughs> it looks like uh, thanks to the skills matter changing their, mar their, their approach and that the, they're seeing the value and so on, they allow us to, to, to get this streaming system. Uh, before that, they wanted to charge us something like £400 a class which obviously was out of the question because we don't have any money for that, that thing unless we got some nice uh, uh, sponsor. <coughs> so what we had to do, we had to obviously jump from place to place. Uh, next week, next week, uh, I think we will have the one meeting at uh, Oliver uh, office. I think so, you should be fine. Yeah, yeah. So, <coughs> so it's pretty much confirmed. After that, we're back here in this room. The, the next week, we can't have it here because this place if somebody comes with big money and rents the whole space, they kick out everybody else who is free, i.e. us. Uh, so the next week we'll be back on the previous place. All the information is on our website, so please do do check this our website. You will find all the information. And then we're back here. And the, 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 the last thing, uh, always our, our, our SVP on our website and on the Skills Matter, it is in Skills Matter. The Skills Matter is extremely important because if they'll see two, three people coming, they will tell us very quickly, thank you. And I'm giving you voice to uh, Oliver. All right, folks. So, uh, yeah, it's obviously going to be a talk on uh, wonderful uh, C++ templates and what you can do with them. Um, judging by our split up of this session, I think Tristan's going to have uh, epically more detailed slides than me. I've gone for sort of... Uh, Show over substance, but we'll see how it goes. Um, it see, 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 your slides look nice. So. They all look fancy, but there's not much to them. <coughs> so I'm, it's going to be more waffling than, than anything as usual. Uh, okay, so obviously the first thing: what are what are C plus plus templates, right? Um, so imagine you have code um, that does a very a very simple operation, a very complex operation, but obviously is hopefully you're familiar with by now, C++ is a strongly typed language. So you might declare a class that has a function in it called add.
that. And you might declare a completely different class that happens to have this add function. It might take the same parameters, it might take different parameters even. The problem is that if you just want a generic function that will do add for both A and B, you, you can't just declare it and have it magically just whisk it all away. So this is where templates solve that problem for you. So um, it allows you to generate code for your various types, i.e. say classes A and B. Uh, but only at, this only happens at compile time. So um, if anyone's ever read any of Linus Torvalds' uh, hatred posts, rants about C++, um, one of the things he does might, uh, complain about is, is actually templates. Um, they're very powerful, they're, they're a great thing to use, um, but he does rightly bring up the point that um, with templates, when you actually utilize the template, the compiler's gonna go off and it's actually gonna create all that machine code for that particular kind of usage. So, you know, let's say for example, you have one that interacts with class A, it's gonna go off and generate code that does what it needs to do on class A, and then you use it for class B, and it's gonna generate another chunk of code. So if you use one template many, many times, you could end up actually with a really large executable because it's had to generate the individual chunks of code for each, every single one. So when you do use templates, um, you do have to be careful of that. Obviously compilers have got a lot smarter, um, so it can recognize, oh well, I can actually call these two things in the same way. And the, nowadays the state of the art is that it can fold it down to some degree, so it's not as horrific as it was back in the days when Linus was, was ranting about it. Uh, so let's consider a relatively simple, hopefully straightforward example. So in terms of actually declaring a template, the first thing is you want to have your template declaration. So let's start with the keyword template. Then within these two greater than, less than pieces, you then have your parameter list. This is a very sh simple one. Uh, we're just declaring a type name T. Um, one thing to note is that the word class and type name are interchangeable here. You could use class, which is shorter. Uh, generally for consistency, um, we're just going to use type name. Uh, so what we're basically declaring here is we're going to have something, something's going to follow this, something must follow it, um, and it's going to have a templated type name, which we can fill in whenever we utilize it. So now we have our usual function. We're just declaring a very simple function here. So the return type of this add or concat function is, and you'll see why it's called this later soon, is just, it's gonna return t. It's gonna take a const reference to t and another const reference to t. And then it's just gonna, just gonna do a plus b. Fairly simple example. So I'm, I'm looking suspicious there. Let's any questions? Oh, oh, okay. Squint. Do you want to know where it's going? No, I'm not. I'm not. Okay. 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 Really Got it. Okay, cool. If there's any, qu any questions, though, please, please ask. Um, so, obviously, it's too simple. Just does A plus B. Okay. Does and it then, have to be the, the reference? No. It does not have to be a reference. So, for efficiency, we're, we're going to take a const reference. Um, as long as the types themselves are compatible, so you, if, if they're copyable, for example, you could just take T. So, if you if you had some say you had some class that has that you can add it has operator plus or whatever, uh -huh. then as long as it's copyable, you could just take t, or you could you could obviously stood move it if it was movable. Okay. Obviously taking taking a const reference is is safer. It, it's oh. it's almost guaranteed to work as long. Well. Could I do the 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 the, the, uh, the const t? Could that be a different uh, if I'm applying this in code? Could it be like a different type of uh, int and Double. Yeah, so, so in this case, um, we're saying that we're going to take a single type. So it's going to take two parameters, they, they're going to be the same type, and then it's going to return a new type that's the same as these two. So these have to be the same type, and it's going to return something back that's also the same type. It's going to, okay. it's going to, it's going to construct whatever this is as the return. I see, okay. You, but, but obviously what you can do is have a comma, add type name u, type name ret, whatever. You can add more and more here, so then you could take one type here, a completely different type here, and return yet another type here. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, obviously, they all have to be compatible. Uh, this, is, this is the simplest one that will actually almost be guaranteed to work. So here's our, here's our first example. So we're actually using C++, is it 11, 14? Was that 11? I think it's actually 11, wasn't it? 14. 14. Oh, it's 14. Yeah. Okay. So we're using the C++ 14 feature here, uh, which is, what's the string? Is it used to find no, no, it's not the user defined, it's that's what they're called. Specialized literal or whatever it is. Anyway, so the, the basic gist of this is that this is actually a stood string. So it will give rather than being a oh, wait for the next. 
excellent, okay. There with us, please. Nice view of the door. It's interesting, I think it's a good reminder. Okay. I'll put that from the camera. Obviously, you choose buffering. Okay. Um, so, for those of us who are freshly joining, just to recap, actually, um, we, just, we just got into templates, um, and this is the basic declaration of uh, a template. So, yeah, we're using the C14 feature here. So rather than having a const char star, uh, which is obviously a pointer to a char array, which would be a bit useless to add, adding pointers obviously is pointer arithmetic. Uh, std trick, std string obviously implements the plus operator. So if you have two std strings and you do plus, it gives you back a brand new string with the with what they both what they, what they both contained joined together. So this will this will work. Um, how does it work though? So within C there's what's called deduction. So the compiler will look at these two parameters and it goes, oh, okay, well, that's a string. So by this point, it's already, it's already figured it out. Um, one point to actually uh, mention, though, is there's no uh, defined order of argument evaluation in C++. So it does not go left to right. It does not go right to left. It's up to the compiler. So it will deduce it. It's guaranteed to deduce it. So it will figure out what T is from this one or maybe this one. It's up to the compiler which one it's going to look at first. Um, but yeah. So it's going to obviously give you back, there's a little space there if you can't see it. This is going to obviously return hello world. So let's have another example. Just add some numbers together. It's going to be, well, anyone want to guess what the second one's going to do? What's, the, what, what's, the, what's, it going to, what's it going to return if you give it that? Yeah, exactly. That's it. Got, a, got a question. Yep. Does it need to include string header to make it to make yes. it work? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so, uh, they, what are they talking about specifically? Are they talking about this hello s? Ah, uh, I'm just checking. Looking for MPO define. You need to. I'm assuming it must mean that. So there's two there's two things you have to do. Um, yes, you have to include string. Yeah. yeah. So yes, you have to include string. Uh, and additionally, um, in order for the little s to work, you have to <coughs> have the line using namespace std colon colon string underscore literals. And then that brings that brings it in, so you can actually make use of it. Um, okay. So as I said, it deduces t at compile time, which I can actually read the stuff in advance, but it's completely cut off. Um, so yeah, T is due to compile time. Um, there are actually restrictions on what it can and can't do, uh, which we'll get into a little bit later. So what I'll tell you for now, obviously, is that if the type is an argument, it can, it can figure it out. And as I was saying previously about how you can end up with many bit chunks of CPU code generated, um, this technically doesn't exist. So. As, as, this, as this bit of code stands, it doesn't exist until you use it. So this usage line is then going to make you internally generate one version to do the string addition, string concatenation rather. And then this is going to generate yet another function that does C addition. Chances are this is going to be really simple. This could be essentially one CPU instruction, maybe two, just to add the two values together. Um, just a question. Yeah. Why do you remove the... Um Yes, it would fail to compile. So, because what if, what if from the second one, hmm? from the, just from the second one. Yeah, it will fail to compile. So here's no, I can explain why. So this is one type, right? The type MT. Yeah. So the required the contract is that these the return type is going to be the same as this type and this type. So this is a std string because you didn't change this one, but you changed this one, so it doesn't have s. So obviously without the s, that's just a const char star, yeah. which is obviously not a std string. Yeah, but if the compiler did deduce the one with the s first, wouldn't it like construct a std string on the fly with the const char? And because it's why well, you need that t string no. from one of them, it probably didn't make a conversion. Right? Oh, you're right. No, because it doesn't know which argument to prefer to do the deduction from. Oh, okay. I see. In this case. So so you say you might be yeah. Yeah. I think it's undefined, isn't it, really? I think it could be undefined. I think it could be, I think it's undefined. Yeah, because I, I see what you're saying. If it was literally constant string and, yeah. then that as a const char star would just work. That's an, in, that's an interesting question. And I think, it, I think it would probably fail because 
the dedu it's going to mess up. It's still going to mess up the deduction. Um, we, can, we can try it actually. Um, yeah, the, the, the idea is obviously it's just, it's just going to generate two different two different functions. I've got another question. Go ahead. The template needs to be the header only. Yeah, I'll go. There's. Oh, do you want me to leave it for now? Go on, go on. Okay. So, um, yes and no. Um, you can declare a template uh, type and not provide the implementation in the header. But this is where it now gets very, very tricky. Um, there are legitimate reasons for doing it. Mm -hmm. And first of all, the requirement is that you need to know in advance what types you're going to essentially allow people to use. So if I say I've declared this template type MT, and imagine I don't actually give it a body. So I just have add or concat arguments, semicolon, end. And then in my, in my implementation file, my .cpp file, I then have the actual implementation. Now, in order for anyone to physically be able to use it, I have to do what's called template explicit template specialization. So in my .cpp file, I will then declare I can, I've added the syntax on my slide, sadly. But I will then declare actual instantiations of add or concat. So I'll have maybe one for int, one for double, one for string. And then anybody who includes my header can only use the template for those types I explicitly instantiated. Whereas if I put it, if I put the whole thing in the header, their compiler is just going to generate that code because it knows what it is. So yes, you can do it, but you better be very sure of the types you're going to permit. So if you want to offer a way to avoid repeating yourself whilst also not letting anyone use any type they want. Uh, yes, you, you can do it, uh, but that's that's obviously a, a getting far more advanced. Um, yeah, the second, obviously the second usage is creating a one that adds numbers together, so four plus one is five, fairly simple. Um, and yeah, as I said, um, effectively any, any template type is just a, a blueprint that you then instantiate by utilizing it. It doesn't really exist until you make use of it. Um, doesn't mean it can just be a syntactic, syntactically invalid, um, with, the ex with the exception of Microsoft's compiler, where you can insert garbage into this template bit and other kinds of crazy crap. Generally, GCC, Clang, they will, they will still validate the code to make sure it's sane. Um, so you, so you can't, you can't, they can't, they still can't be gibberish. Uh, okay. So, basic rules of templates. Um, they can be deduced from, from the function's arguments, but not the function's return type. Um, that means that, for example, uh, if you had that, the previous one, um, so you want me to go back, or can you remember it well enough? Well, I'll, I'll go for If you want me to go back, I'll explain it, then I can if you want me to. So, imagine we had the template type, but the arguments were just int. So, when you, you didn't take anything but int as the arguments, but it did return t. Um, in that case, there's no way for it to deduce it. So you would have, anyone using the function would have to explicitly say, you know, add or concat, angle brackets again, int, which we'll, we'll show in a bit. Uh, oh no, come on, there we go. Uh, so yeah, with the exception of C14, where you can just specify auto as the return type, which is, if you like, a kind of implicit templating in many ways. Um, with the return type set to auto, it's going to just deduce it for you from whatever you return, which is obviously very nice. Um, and you can, of course, you don't need to declare a template to use auto. So if you want to make a function and have auto as a return type, you can just do it. You don't have to put template in front of it. Um, excuse me. Yeah. Can you use autos um, for the arguments function? Yes, you also can. Um, no, you can't? Only for lambda. Oh, um, shit, yeah, you're right. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so no, you can't, only for lambda functions, which are a bit special, uh, but uh, no. But having said that, uh, GCC does have an extension that lets you do it, but uh, Clang and Microsoft uh, don't, and it's not part of C++, it's just something that GCC has. So it's not standard. It's, you can do it, but it's not actually standardized. So just one question, so does auto make templates redundant? No. no, no. Unless you use that extension in GCC, which kind of, you're, you're, so if you use that and extend that kind of ex the extension, it's still really a template. When you have those auto parameters or even an auto return type, even just the auto return type, it's still effectively 
in implicitly templated function. Can you call it from two different places with two different diff two different argument types then? Well, no, not if you're if you're using extension, yeah, because okay. types are auto. Okay. But again, it's not this is that's not standard C plus um, plus. Probably another point I should mention is that C plus plus eleven uh, does have auto for a return type with one big catch is that it's only actually useful for what's called a trailing return type. So um, this is not really template related, but uh, essentially what you for convenience, say you have a class and your class returns some subfield of its some some subclass for example. Um, in older version of C++ pre-11, you'd have to write out the full thing like my class, colon, colon, subtype, colon, colon, blah, 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 whatever. Um, in C++11, you could just do auto, and then you do auto, you play your function, you do a little arrow, dash, and then, you know, greater than. And then, because it now, now knows, oh, this is this function he's declaring as a member of the class, you don't have to blow out the whole thing. You could just directly refer to that subclass or whatever it was. So it was, it was for convenience. Um, whereas in C++14 they said, oh no, let's make it to do stuff. Um, so since C++17, um, it's gotten even better. Um, whereas in my previous example, obviously the template was deduced, the template type was deduced from the parameters. Um, I should have been really giving an example of a class. Oh, there's one coming actually, now I say that. Um, in C++17, if you have a templated class, so imagine you declare the word template type nt above a whole class, which I'll show in a sec. Um, previously, you always have to give the actual type. So imagine when you use vector here, remember std vector or uh, std unique pointer? Those are templated classes. Std vector is a class, and it takes a template, right? You, you template it on, say, you want to store an int in it or whatever. So since C17, if the constructor takes that type, then you don't have to put it in there anymore. You don't have to put those bracket angle brackets. You can just, as long as the parameters in the, in whatever it takes in the constructor, it's like, oh, I know what this is. Very nice. But prior to C plus plus seventeen, you can't do it. So, here's the example. Again, we're going to say we've declared a template. Now we've got two types we're going to use. These, these can of course be anything you want. I just decided to use T and then U. It's T, the most popular. T is because obviously it's a type capital T. Yeah. Template. Yeah, so we're going to declare a class. I'm using struct just for default public visibility. So again, struct, struct and class are interchangeable keywords. The only difference between them is that class defaults everything to private, including inheritance. Struct defaults everything to public. Uh, so we're going to declare t as our first field, so it can be anything, and then u as a second field, again anything, and I've missed a semicolon, excellent failure. Then there's the constructor. So obviously, it will take a T and a U. It doesn't actually do anything with it. So this is a little bit of kind of trickery here. Um, the idea is obviously this would this may be useful to you in seventeen, but you could pass it, you know, say a std string and an int. And then actually, not let me just go on and, and, and show the, the usage. Right. Okay, it's better. Oh no, it's great. Okay. So in C plus plus seventeen, you can just declare your instance of class. So you have a, you know, just instant instant A. And we're going to say that we want to have the first field to be an int and the second field to be a boolean. So in C17 or newer, it will just figure it out because the constructor takes the template type. So it goes, oh, yeah, okay, that's an int, that's going to be an int, that's a boolean, that's going to be a boolean. Whereas in 14 or older, you have to explicitly define what the types are. So again, you declare your type, you fill in the template, then you just declare your, your instance variable, b in this case. And obviously that. This syntax, this older syntax, is completely valid <coughs> in 17 or newer. It'll work, it'll, it'll work just fine. But this, this requires C17 or beyond. So again, uh, instantiations of a template type are unique. So consequently, if you swap them, so obviously this is, oh no, I missed that one, didn't I? So, <laughs> oh no, it's not, no, I didn't. So in bool, is completely different from bool int. Change, swapping, swapping the order, swapping them in any way, changing it in any way, is now making it a different class. So you could potentially implement a conversion operator that says, you know, convert this guy to this guy or convert this to this, but you've got to actually write the code in there so that they're aware of each other's types. This is 
this is like calling, you know, you've got class A and class B, right? They're completely different. A template is an extension of that. These are not the same. They are their own, to own type in their own right. Um, and again, as I said earlier, uh, the keywords term name class are interchangeable, but only inside the template declaration. Um, there's, are you going to cover the whole type name usage I'm going to go outside of the template? Outside of the, oh, you mean like you've got a number function type, outside? Like type name, value type, and that kind of thing. Oh, I'm not sure. I imagine if you want to say, say a vector, yeah. you want to get the value, you want to use value, yeah, kernel kernel value type. No. You have to do, oh, okay. So, um, how can I best express this? If you have a if you have, so vector implements a static field called value type. So you say you have vector int, you can do colon colon value type, which resolves to its type. So say you want to dynamically be passed a vector in a template, but you want but then you want to use the type that that vector holds as a field. Um, you'd have to stick the word type name in front of it uh, because I'm of reasons. Which <laughs> I'm gonna add a slide. Um, there, don't okay, okay, cool. All right, so he'll get to that after me. All right, so now it's time to code. Everyone pop over to that URL, and when everybody's there, um, I will, if you wish, slide backwards so you can see the template example, so you can probably, if you need it. Oh, well, if you don't need it, I'll go, just go ahead and make the change. Anybody needs any help, of course, feel free to ask. Me, Tristan, or uh, Justin over there, also, who knows how to do it. If anybody at home wants some help, then feel free to speak up. I guess Tom will. Uh, should uh, I should uh, give someone the control back again? Now I have to. Uh, ne next class will be easier. <laughs> We've got what we've done for being here. By the example, or do you think you, you think you got it? Who solved it so far? Well, I didn't open it. Oh, you know, yeah, no, yeah. You got it? Yeah.
So uh, that simple example there is quite helpful. to make multiple versions of the function. There should only be one version that you do that is templated. If you declare it multiple, if you, if you add more functions and you're not doing it right. Yes, this is where you have the multiple template and then you're passing in the other template. This is a real problem because uh, you can get pages and pages of error messages. Errors, yeah. that seem, so it's, in, it's infamous for, right? So, for example, if you try calling standard sort on something, on like a list, something that's not a random access container, you'll get hundreds of lines. Of, and C++ is infamous for it, so... Um, yeah, clone, clone is a bit more friendly. Yeah, it's a little bit better, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, and one of the big problems...
idea is one of the things they want to do for C plus plus twenty is to make uh, is to give you a facility what's called constraining templates, so you can say you can only yes only use this template with types that satisfy these criteria. Is anyone else still going or? Um, well, the, the he's still, he's still working is on it. So closed okay. set then. So when you write template code, you want to write it in such a way that someone else you've never met in the way in the future might try and want to use your code with their type. Right, so you, you can't just have this closed set of only the type. In most cases, you don't want to limit it to this closed set of types that only you know about. Right? Because in future, you, might, you don't have to modify your code every time there's a new type that you want to try and use it with. Um, so, but, yeah, so this facility is to say, well, okay, you can only use this template with things that have this property. And the idea behind that is rather than getting pages of messages, you could probably give you a nice message saying, this type doesn't. I don't have operator class. So yeah. I can't add these things together, so this type, this type of template won't work. Sorry? Oh, can't. Oh, yeah, I think it's going to look back on until you have to get that. Well, a car is, uh, is an arithmetic type. Right, so although it represents like a, a, a letter A as a, a value, an ASCII value, so 56 is, I don't know, whatever it is. Oh, well, whatever it is, I can't remember. But it is an arithmetic type, so when you add two of them together, you get whatever that is. Uh, but a car can only store, store well, it's an only 8 bit value, so it can hold. Yes, so it, might be, it might be signed. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> car's a funny one because. Um, well, no, it's undefined whether car is plain car is signed or not. Annoyingly, um, but you can specify that you want to sign a car and unsign a car. Cars are a lot of There are, there are. Um, Trouble with people. Keep wanting to add more C++. Um, it's been around for so long that everyone has taken the good word to use for their, their own code. So you can't really come up with it. Like it'd be better if type name was just type. But that's a bit too generic to kind of claim as a keyword. Right. Okay. No, no, no. I'll, I'll round it off. Okay. All right, everyone, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crack on since we're five minutes away from Tristan's. Probably not be better. All right. Anyone need any help still? Okay, let me see how you're at, where you're at. All right. What's the response to you so far? Uh, so, there's no return. interested that example from earlier where we had the question was if we've got both two arguments both of which the t then you have different things what happens that's called the deduction failure the compiler will say i don't know which of these arguments you've given me different types i don't know which of those i'm supposed to deduce from so 
Uh, I'm, I'm going to give you an error. And in that case, you have to supply the template argument explicitly, which we'll see how to do. We have a we have a good comment oh, yeah. from Tony Lewis. I don't think it's strictly true that templates need to be header only. Just that the compiler needs the definition available when it's instant instantiated. I'm sorry, my tell, tell Tony that he's right. But stop being a pain in the ass. I think he <laughs> heard you. <laughs> <laughs> So if you want multiple CPP files if not, it'll to be able to instantiate your template, then yes, it needs to be defined no, no, in a header. You, I think it may not work if you take a yes. reference. Um, you could take an and and because if it's deducing the time, then and and always works. I think as a as a bonus assignment, I said. Tony, you should be here doing this, by the way. Move for efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I think everyone's cracked it. Um, substitution failure is not an error. So this is, this is where we're getting a little bit more fancy. Not that fancy. Um, one of the nice things about templates is you can, this is probably a bad way to word it actually, I'm not, I shouldn't have said it like this. So take, it, take, take this, I might, I might reword it before I put it online. Um, but the, the, the basic essence is that you can, you, can, you can define a template function or class or whatever multiple times with different sets of template parameters, that's what I should really qualify it with, and you can also specialise your types. So as an example, which I'm really hoping Matt's website does not kill, it shouldn't have done. If I click this, please work, please work. Okay, we're almost there. I just need to move the tab. It's going to behave itself. All right, so ignore the horrible looking assembler on the right hand side. Trying to make this a little more readable. Let's try, is it Alt Shift, Command Shift? All right, is that readable? Yes. Cool, okay. So. Here's a, a very simple example of specialization. So in our, in our little main function here, we've decided we've got a, a std set. Um, a std set is just a container um, that gives you O1 uh, lookup. So it's designed, it's designed as, a, as, as a container for where you want to put something into it and then check if it exists later on, basically. So say, I don't know, you had a, you got a set of magic values, magic numbers, and then someone like you know tries to guess the number, and then say there's a million numbers to guess out of a, a million correct numbers out of ten billion. You can store a million into a set, and then when you want to look it up, you don't have to check every single entry. It internally performs a well, actually a set is a B tree, but it uses a binary tree lookup internally to quickly find out whether the object exists. Uh, and then we've got a vector. Obviously, you know that that's just an array effectively. Um, and then we have our Templated types here. So on a uh, vector, you can of course do in place back. That works fine. Um, you can also do in place, but there's a catch. Um, if you in place on a vector, then uh, you need to also in place. Hmm? In place for the vector. Uh, it's like push back. Oh, okay. Okay. In place oh, yeah, back, yeah, yeah. Yes, but it gives you it gives you perfect forwarding. So the, the reason to use in place back this is getting going a bit off topic, but I might want to mention this as well. Um, if you had a class, if you had a vector of some class, right? With in place back, you can just give the parameters for the, that the constructor of that class would take, and they just get forwarded straight into a new instance of whatever the vector's holding. So say you know you have a vector of my class, you just give you can just call in place back with the parameters your class needs to construct. Anyway, so vector does have in place, but you have to give it an, a second argument for the position. So what we want to happen is if we use set, we don't really want to use in, we, 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 don't, we can't use in place back either. Oh, can you? Oh, no, you can use in place back with a set, can't you? No, you can't. No, you can't. And you also can't, but you can't use in place back with a set. So the problem is that this doesn't work for vector and uh, this doesn't work for set. So 
how can we how can we make it work properly? So let's say well we'll, we'll just generify then so that we can have generic type C reference and then uh, deduced type for the value you want to stick in it. So in the case of add value on the set, this is going to be fine. Yeah, cool. This is going to be fine. Can, does the does, 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 does set have in place back? No, sorry, this is the wrong, wrong, the wrong order. My, my apologies. The vector. Uh, if you if you have a parser vector, yes, vector has in place back. The value is going to be fine. So great, we can just we can stick it in. Now, if we do a set, this isn't going to work. So we specialize, and this is where substitution failure is not an error. No, it doesn't strictly come in, does it? No, no it doesn't at all. <laughs> this is this, this is. is this is what happens when you when you try to make up examples at, at uh, twelve at night. Hours in the morning. <sighs> anyway, so I'll, I'll fix this later. But it's, it's, it's a good example of specialization at least. So because you have a specialization for set, this this effectively overrides this one. So because this is more specific, it says, "Well, solve this one." We're just going to go straight to the specialization. Just from a very technical point. Of this is not template specialization. This is it's selecting the more specialized function, but yes, it's just yes, function yes. overloading. Right, we're not actually doing a template specialization of the the first function. We've got two different templates, different arguments, and the second uh, has a, is a better match. So yeah. it'll do overload resolution on the two functions. So I see. So okay, let's see if I can get back to the old. So are you saying that both of these would pass? Um, so what happens is well, this is definitely it, compiling. So this is the output. <laughs> but yeah. When you, so the first add value, 155 there, yeah. it'll try and create both templates, yeah. right? And it will see that both work, okay. right? So it'll, then it'll look and it'll compare and say which, one, which one's better. And it'll actually prefer the second one just because the first argument is not a template. Oh, right? okay. So it's called a tiebreaker, the, the tiebreaker, right? Yeah. So, oh, okay. so it's, it's explicitly not specialized. And that's really, but that will happen at compile time. <coughs> yeah, yes, it's all compiled all time. Compiled time. time. But the second, with well, the second call to add value, the first parameter x is not a set, so it the second overload doesn't count. Right. So it ignores the second overload and just goes to the first one. Yeah. Uh, okay, back to my slides. Is this going to work? Yes, that works. I'm getting rid of my presentation view. Okay, whatever. I'll just solve it off. Um, Okay, yeah, so as we described, that's an arbitrary template, although not strictly true, as you've just described beautifully. So let's move on to template parameter packs, which is a little bit more exciting. C11 and beyond, wonderful stuff. So essentially, the idea is that what if you want to have a template on n number of things, n number of types? So where I say n number of types, potentially infinite number of types. So I was, I was struggling to take a good example for this, and I, I think I found a mediocre one instead. <laughs> Um, so this is the basic syntax. So what you saw before, we have these magical little dot 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 bits. So this is now saying that args can just be da -da 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 to infinity, comma separated. So when you when you use the template, you can declare types all day. Oh, okay. Um, so example that I thought of was let's imagine we want to implement our instead make tuples. Okay. So essentially. A tuple in uh, C++ is just a class that's part of the standard library, which is templated, and you can use it to store any number of, of types, any number of objects. So imagine, you know, a common example of this is I want to make a function, and that function is not just going to return one thing, it's going to return two things, three things, four things, ten things, right? I know how many things I want it to return, that's fine, that's not potentially infinite, but I want it to return, you know, say an int, a string, and a bool. So the return type, of my function can be std tuple, template parameters, in the string ball. Easy. Um, but now let's say we want to make a generic function that can generate a tuple for us. So we can call a function called make tuple, we can give it any, any arguments we want, any arguments of any type imaginable, and you just get back a tuple with all those types all done, all, all done for you. Sounds a bit complicated, it's actually not. So here's the example. And I can't remember if I did the simple and proper one or if I just did it. Let's see. Does it give you the right size? It's probably bigger. I can make it a bit bigger if you want. 
Okay. Everybody can see? Is that all right? Okay, so, oh yeah, I did a, I did a full more one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the bits that matter and the bits that don't. So let's just take it line by line. Don't, don't get too daunted by it. So obviously we have our parameter pack here, right? So this is the, the variable number of, of things we're gonna take. Then the return type is gonna be a stood tuple, which is obviously from include tuple. And it's gonna contain args dot dot dot, which is whatever arguments we deduced. Then the next part is to actually deduce those types. So don't focus too much on the and and, I know that looks a bit funky. Um, but essentially we're saying the type is args and we're gonna capture it in args in this, 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 this effective L value, but it's, this, is, this isn't really representing a single object, right? This is representing all of the objects, so this is really representing all of these here where we use it. Cool. Um, and then how do you actually part, make an object to pass back? So again, we're gonna, we want to return this to the tuple. Um, I can do this way to make it explicit really, but um, again, args dot dot dot, so it's what it's templated on. Now, the std, this is, this, is, this is me being a bit over the top. This is, this is called perfect forwarding. This is how you do perfect forwarding. Um, if you wanted the sort of not strictly really correct, you could, you could simplify to just, you know, come on. You could simplify just to, just to that. Strictly speaking, that wouldn't always work. So this, this would actually fail for certain types. Um, but that's, that's a simple way of looking at it. So what, what the compiler will actually do with that is it will expand these four things out into, I mean, I can, I can do a comment below just to demonstrate it. So it's effectively saying return std. This, this is what the compiler does for you, tuple. And it's gonna be what in your char star, or const char star, we'll just say char star for now. In, So the compiler is going to do all this for you magically for free. It's going to this 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 rep, this represents all of these. This dot 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 says I want you to expand the set of arguments here, please. And that's what it was all. So it expands the types out for you. So it, it obviously deduces them. It deduces all of them magically. Fills them in. So args dot 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 turns into all the stuff you've passed here. And then finally, all the arguments also get expanded. Marvelous. And can you do any any type? So you have yeah, we have. I mean, we have, literally have. So in the actual, let me scroll it back. So, so bool wouldn't be a problem. There's a bool there. Oh yeah, sorry. So you can, fine. It can. This will literally take anything. You can make up your own class and pass it and pass it in. Okay. It will do anything you want. So just one strange question: If you have a template like that, yeah, that can take multiple arguments. Is it possible to write a program that would actually? print out the types you passed in? Yes. So there's a um, example of uh, C++ 11-ish. Uh, are you familiar with printf? Or sprintf? Yeah? yeah. C yeah, yeah. thing. That's a C, a C thing. Well, PHP has it as well. But um, The idea is it's a function you can call with some format and then pass it a load of things to print out in a string, right? A load of different stuff. Um, there's a, there's a C plus plus eleven version of that which uses this this template parameter pack. Um, so you obviously you could do rather than converting those objects to a string, you could yeah you could make your compiler print out each individual type as it goes over it. Um, there's also there's also fancy stuff in C plus plus like std make sequence. So you can have it you can have it generate a sequence of like one to a million for you. So I don't know. Say you want to call some function with the values one to a million. Without, but you, but you want to be able to do it at compile time. You can use std make sequence to actually do that. So obviously, if you have a for loop, that's that's technically runtime. I mean, compilers are a lot smarter now, so it'll probably figure out your for loop can just be done anyway at compile time. But if you use something like make sequence, it's guaranteed to be compile time. Yeah. Um, can you get the template within the template? Template template types. Yeah. Yes, you can. And if you can do that. And let's say the next is the template. Yes. Also, as it's mm -hmm. um, how does it, what does it actually print out? Um, so, like, let's say it's inside that uh, tuple. Okay, so when you, a nested template type isn't quite what you're thinking of it as. 
Um, so that's what to explain this to templates. Uh, so if I was going to, let, it, let me just make sure I'm clear on what you're thinking. So let's say, let me just edit this. Are you thinking of, of something like this? Template, template, type name, and then the correct type class, so I should send to you. You, is that what you're kind of thinking of? Where you've got, where you've got this, this thing and you've got a template in a template? Mm, no. Um, maybe like my six. So we asked at the moment you have in all parts. Instead of having that, um, for one of those arguments, have the template as one of the arguments. Oh, I see. Um, so you could, no, you'd have to, you could declare a template function that would call this. I can't. I can't put a te I can't literally put the, the template keyword in here. So I can't. I can't stick the template keyword in there. I could make a function that calls it. That is also templated. Um, so you know, a, a, a super simple example, right? Is we could just have template type name. There's live coding. Isn't that wonderful? Or we, I don't know, just That's great. Um, and then yeah, we could do. Uh, we could use it. So we'll have. T A, and then you know what? Let's, let's, let's get a nice thing. So we'll have an auto and say void, and then yeah, you you could easily just do, for example, return. No, that's not how you spell it, is it? Uh, uh, what do I call it? Make tuple. Uh, a A A five bool. Five five bool. Oh, sorry, that's really funny. It's not compiling because I've declared it above it. If I moved it down, it would work. Um, not all, not all, not all. True. So yeah, you can do you, you can just do something like that. So you can call a template from a template. It's not really nested, but yeah, of course you can use you can use a template from within another template. Um, yeah. All right. So back to this. Uh, yeah, any questions? I suck in this question chat. Yeah, any, any, more, any questions? I think, I think Tristan's going to have a lot more for well, you anyway. How often, how often do you have to write templates? In, like, what, what do you expect the templates to be like? Uh, you, know, you have to rely on templates a lot, or is it just good to know? And so, um, in the C++ core guidelines, which is the the, the wonderful resource that Bjarne Stroustrup has been sort of spearheading, uh, the general recommendation is um, don't go overboard with templates, or otherwise, generally avoid them unless they are making your code easier to read and or simpler. So, for example, if you're if you're solving if you're scratching the kind of itch where you're faced with either repeating yourself, say you know writing out a function that's going to have to take fifty different types to do the same thing you could you could express once, yeah, use a template that makes perfect sense. Um, if you're you know making something similar to well, it doesn't have to be similar to, but some, something along the lines of say you know vector and list and all these lovely uh, container types uh -huh. in the standard library. Makes perfect sense, right? Someone wants to store, uh, you know, they want they want to store some type that you're not aware of, um, and you but you need to give them some generic functionality. That's a perfect example. Um, what's what's one I, I I can think of that I've done? Uh, so I did a kind of hash um, not so long ago, which was um, based on IP addresses. So it was a container that implemented longest prefix matching. So imagine if, if anyone's familiar with IP networking, then uh, say you have like an IP address, you can have a subnet of like say slash 24 or slash 16 or slash eight. And obviously the most specific thing that matches um, is, is what you return. So I developed this container where you could say, well, I want to store this subnet, so like 10.0.0.0 slash eight. I want it to be associated with this object instance. And my, my implementation was generic so you might have it return you know if you find 10.0.0.1 maybe you just return a boolean true false 
maybe you want to return a pass. I don't care. So that was a brilliant use of templates for me. It enabled me to just generify what I gave mm -hmm. back to whoever wants to use my container. Cool. Any other questions? Thank you for that. Any other questions? Any online questions? I think, yeah, no. no that's it, There's all right. There's a delay on the video, so yeah. Oh yeah, that's true, there is a delay. <laughs> well, I'm not sure. Uh, Everyone's happy? We go to this one. I send a request, so we'll see. Nope. Oh. Peace and silence. All right, excellent. Well, thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks very much. Okay. <laughs> so we'll pass now to Christian. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Musical chairs for a second. Oh, nice fresh beer. Talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, you can get some. But anyway, that's just me being silly. Are we all right to move on? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I will stop that. That breaks everything. Um, okay. So this is part two. So um, for those who, who don't know, uh, previous weeks it's just been me talking for two hours, which gets a bit tiresome for everybody. So. Uh, we're now spitting things, so Ollie's doing half of it, I'm doing half of it. Uh, this is only the second second week we've done it, so uh, yeah, we'll see how it works out. We, we decided we went we for slightly different approaches, so Ollie wanted to do a sort of broad introduction. I'm going to go into a little bit more depth about syntax and what's allowed and what's not, and how particularly you write templates, and also um, we'll get on to talking about specialization uh, of class templates. Uh, before I go on, this is like my default slide one uh, for everything, particularly this one. Please do come and join us and talk to us. Um, oh, and uh, yes, we've also now got a subreddit, which is um, seems very lonely. So just just go there and, and you know. There is one say hello post. One post which I. There is one post. I don't know who is it. Who's it by? <laughs> <laughs> it's me. I said to create a GTOP replacement in C++, but you know. It's for us. So the thing is, like I said earlier, we struggled to come up with an idea. So if you think like, oh, actually we could do this amazing thing, put it there and you know, upvote other people's ideas, but make some movements because you know, I will be only suggesting and it will be doing stuff I like, which is fine with me. <laughs> um, yeah, but as, seriously, as, as Tom was saying at the start, um, it's really hard, particularly for me and Ollie, because we've been doing this for quite a while, and as with anything, you kind of you forget what, what's hard and what's not, because there are things that I find very tricky, and I have to look up every time I do it, and I scratch my head, and other people go, oh, what's, what's tricky about that? Um, and, and the other way around as well. So if we're going too fast, if you want us to go back in the, and cover something uh, in a bit more detail, um, basically, we want to we want to know how, how you want us to structure these. So please do let us know. Um, right at the end uh, on the slides, I've got various ways you can talk to us. Um, but that's that's probably the, the easiest and the main one because um, we're on there a lot of the time, particularly Tom. Okay, that's the sort of admin bit out of the way. Um, let's go on and talk some more about templates. Right. Why do we want them? You should all know this. Ollie's already told you. Why do we want templates? What's good about them? Why do we bother? <laughs> well, because uh, they allow us to say lots, of, uh, reuse lots of code. If we don't know types, which we will be getting, 
make it life easier. Make it magical. Then repetition. Those good things with repetition. Generifying is what you're saying as well. No, generic's a good word. So this is what I put. Generic type safe and highly efficient. All right, so um, as far as I know, not that I was around at the time, but templates were first invented by Jan Strasser, who was the guy who invented C++, uh, because he wanted to be able to write a type safe container like Vector. Um, and they've grown into this sort of Turing complete monster. Um, but this is, this is the point, to write generic code that's type safe uh, and it's highly efficient because with templates, you get code that is just as efficient as if you'd written it by hand just for that one particular type. Okay, um, so the, the STL, it's the, the sort of algorithms and containers part of the standard library is really, really efficient. Right? You are hard, hard <coughs> pushed to beat it even if you were to sit down and write your own implementation just for your specific types. Um, it's really good. Uh, if you're familiar with um, Java or C Sharp, I don't know if anybody is, uh, they have this feature called generics that looks very similar, got the angle brackets and things. The way they work is actually quite different. I mean, the, the principle is the same to be able to write code that can work on a variety of types, uh, but in particular, the way Java generics work is very different from templates. Um, so if you're sitting there going, oh, I know Java, templates are just different names, but generics, they're not, they're, it's, it's very different. Um, and this is why the difference, so this is, I've borrowed all these terminology, templates a blueprint, it's like a stencil. It's not code, code in itself, it's a, it's a list of instructions for the compiler for how to generate that class or function, right? So uh, a class template is a blueprint stencil and then when you give it a specific type to instantiate with is the terminology then it'll sort of stamp out that stencil with a, a concrete type does that make sense okay and so that's yes i was just saying the, the important point is the bottom one which Ollie mentioned a couple of times as well when you ins instantiate which is what i'm going to say a lot <laughs> Uh, when you use a template with a particular set of arguments, that is an entirely distinct type from that same template with a, dis a different set of arguments. Uh, that's a really important, really important to know for two reasons. Um, one is that's what makes it so efficient, is because the compiler knows that, let's say you create this function for an int, it knows it's just for ints and it can do all the optimization that it can do for ints. It doesn't have to worry and think, oh, well, maybe you'll put a string in there and I'll have to generate different instructions. Uh, but the other one is something people like to complain about. Oh, sorry. Uh, so you had like a vector and you wanted to fill it with um, instances of a class that you templated. You said that it would create a new distinct class for each one. Could you put all of those in the same, say, vector? No. No. Um, so what you'd have to do there is to have uh, some sort of uh, runtime interface. So using inheritance, like we talked about last time, um, you can't put to two different template instantiations, say it again, uh, two different versions of a template are different types and you can't mix them together in the same array. Um, so yes, the other reason it's important to know, again, Ollie touched on it, is to do with what people like to complain about C++ is something called template bloat, right? So if you have templates and you use them with lots and lots of different types, then the compiler is going to stamp out this code for different types over and over and over again. And you can, it can lead to very big libraries, very big executables. Um, big in the sense of, you know, you've got multiple megabytes. Um, how much we care about this depends on which particular, what type of work you're doing. It's a big deal for people who work on embedded uh, devices where they've only got kilobytes of RAM. Um, probably doesn't matter too much if you're working on a modern laptop. But. Anyway, um, is, that, is that all clear? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 
it's really repeating a lot of what Ollie said. Um, by the way, Tom, if there are any online questions, I'm keeping an eye. Yeah, please just don't know how many people are out there, but just uh, use the text chat and Tom will interrupt me, hopefully. Kinds of templates. There are. That's a bad heading. What can we make a template? What can we? What types of blueprints can we prepare? There are three. Okay. Does anybody know what they are? We've already talked about two of them. Blueprints and struct and class are the same. Struct and class are one and the same. Yeah. So there's types of them. Yeah. So we can have. Class templates. That's the one I prefer. Function. Yeah, function. function templates. Yeah, those are the, There's one more. the main two. Which I didn't cover. Anyone know what the third one is? It's new. Template. Template Tem of templates? No, no, no. Sort of. But Think of it simply. Enum? Uh, not quite. So the, the new one in C14 is we've got something called variable templates, um, which, to be honest, I haven't used all that much, but uh, I've they exist and they're a new, a new feature in C17. Uh, we're not going to talk about variable templates. In fact, uh, not going to talk too much about function templates because Ollie already did that a bit, a lot. So um, this, what I'm going to talk about is mostly about class templates. Um, so yes, variable templates exist. Not many people are using them very much yet. Um, how do we go about declaring them? Again, you've seen this. We'll tell you exactly how it is. Oh, that's come out really small, hasn't it? Sorry, I hope people I can, can read it. that. Can you read it at the back? Yeah, at the back. Yeah. All right. So to announce, to say that we're to introduce a template, we use the template keyword, and then we have these angle brackets, and in the angle brackets, we put the template parameters. There's no practical limit, and we have these things that are parameter packs as well, um, which as you saw, pretty advanced, but uh, really useful uh, if you're doing some hyper generic code. So this is a function template, or a, a, a declaration of a function template. So we have a template keyword, type name T. So we're saying T is a placeholder for some type. And then return type is void, that's the name of the function. And we're saying this function takes an argument of type T. Simple enough. We can do the same thing. This is now a class template. It's exactly the same introduction. And then we say class. In this case, I call it my class. So that shouldn't be too surprising. You just yeah. see what that is. T is a template parameter within the body of the function. We can use the name T as if it referred to a type. With one little caveat that um, I've rapidly, hurriedly added a slide we'll get to in a bit. Um, and what happens is that when we instantiate the template, the compiler does something called type substitution. So every, everywhere you've typed T, it goes and puts int or float or standard string or whatever and then tries to compile that and sees if it makes sense and gives you a pile of error messages if it doesn't. So yeah, as I said, T acts as a placeholder for the real type. So let's talk a bit more about template parameters. I'm gonna say something now that's, I'm including for completeness, but you don't really have to worry about too much today. There are three Three kinds of template parameters. I don't know if kinds is the right terminology. It's what I call them. Type template parameters, non-type template parameters, and template template parameters. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, template template parameters, uh, they just make my head hurt. Uh, they're really complicated to, to think about and to deal with. Um, the most common you'll see is type template parameters. That's what we just saw with type name T. You can also have these things called non-type template parameters. Um, that's where you create a template that uses a, a template parameter that's in a, an int or an enum or something like, something like that. Uh, again, we're not going to worry about them too much today. There's a sort of extension thing for one of the exercises 
later if you want to play with non type template parameters. But 95% uh, of the time, you're going to be talking about type template parameters. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Just this is this is for completeness, just to let you know that they exist. Yes. Right, maybe the devil, not devil out of it, but the kind of thorn in the side. Um, why would you want to use non type template parameters instead of just having, yeah, parameter that's constant or something? Um, so a good example is the uh, the size of a standard array. I don't know if that's the example you were thinking of. No, that's almost exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, the, the size, you're familiar with the type standard array. It's one of the standard library types. It, it wraps a uh, sort of raw language array. And the size of a standard array uh, it must be um, given at compile time. It's compile time constant. So vector, vector is, uh, is on the heap and it grows as you add things to it. Uh, array is slightly different, it's allocated on the stack and it's a fixed size and that fixed size must be known at compile time and for standard array it's given as a non-type template parameter. So there we are, that's... that's Can I ask me another topic? So if the vector is on heap, mm -hmm. yeah, so pretty much can be as big as we want, yeah. but stack is got limited size, mm -hmm. so if we have like a really super duper big uh, array yeah. that might run out into problems because our stack is not large yes. enough. Yep. Stack overflow. You'll, you'll crash. <laughs> so, so does that mean you have to make a, dis a design decision of whether you're going to yes. create a vector or an array? Is that Absolutely, design? yes. Uh, yeah. Also, probably another thing to know about array as well, since we're on the topic now, is um, you can you can move an array. So it doesn't really matter exactly what I'm saying. You can, but you can obviously you can copy a std array. You can also move the std array, but unlike a vector, moving it is actually just copying it. Uh -huh. But can you, if you know that you're you are risking uh, having the, the stack overflow, so can you then force somehow your array to be instantiated by the like, yeah. on heap? So the thing is, you're defining the size of it at compile time. Uh -huh. So when you build the program, it's got to be the number of bytes it's going to consume is known. So when you're obviously you should know how many, how many, how big your stack is going to be. So if you're building for Windows, you're going to say, oh, I've got an eight megabyte stack. So when you're writing std array and deciding how big it's going to be, if you're like, oh, I need more than eight megabytes, you should be like, oh, no, 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 don't use std array because you can't. You, the size of that array is, is is set when you build it. it. Doesn't it can't change afterwards. You can't have the computer read a value in when it runs and change it. Okay, so uh, uh, the, 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 the stack pretty much is on all windows, it's the same size, yes? Yeah, you can manipulate it through header values and the portable executable, but yeah, otherwise it's 8 extra much. So if it's bigger than 8, so then I shouldn't use the array, I should use vector. And you, you probably want to keep a decent margin under that, you don't know what else might be using the stack, the next system calls and whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I'd probably say stick to a on stack arrays and a few megabytes at most. For Windows. Thank you. Sorry, sorry for that. Yeah, fantastic. Right. Um, no, it's a good question because uh, you know, we did cover it yeah, a couple I'll of weeks ago, but uh, no, it's, it's really good to right, have the, uh, yeah, the people who weren't here. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, right, where were we? We were talking about template parameters. Um, so, yeah, these exist, really only the first one um, that you have to worry about today, anyway. Um, so this is what we said, the, the words, so it's a little bit confusing. When you're creating a class, you can use the word class or the word struct, and they pretty much mean the same thing except this default public private. Um, when you're declaring a template in the parameter list, you can either say class or you can say type name. <laughs> right. Sorry. So instead of the template in the first line, template in the so type name you can use... This is template type name T and this is template class T. And these are the same thing, oh, right? Okay. We're here, this is, these aren't two different templates, these are the same template, right? They mean the same thing. Um, unless there's a particularly good reason, it's probably better to use type name because um, 
This using class here implies that it's only class types and strictly speaking something like an int isn't a class type that you can instantiate the template with it. So uh, yeah, I always prefer to use type name. Either, either is fine, like I said, they mean exactly the same thing, but uh, all my examples are going to use type name. I've only got 80 columns, I print my code on punch cards, it saves me some characters. <laughs> Carry on. Sorry. But is, isn't that make, I don't know, what, what's the point then of having two, two things doing this? Okay, so they needed to introduce the word type name, so originally there was only class, uh -huh. you could only use class here, you can't actually use struct, which is weird. Um, you can only use the word class there, uh -huh. uh, but then they needed to invent the, type, the word type name for a, a different problem, actually the one I'll talk about in a minute. They needed to invent this word type name, and then somebody realised that actually type name is a better thing to put here, because like I say, class implies that it doesn't work for things that aren't classes, like integers and what have you. Uh, Which to your point also means you should use class if the purpose of your template is only to work with the class. <laughs> Sure. Is that making like like clouding the, 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 the meaning of your code? Yeah. Depends. Well, it may not be if you if the template type is only aimed at specifying specific classes. Class name makes sense. It's, it's also a matter of style and taste. As ever, as ever, be consistent. Consistency is yeah. important. The point of this is to say these are both valid. Prefer the first one, but if you see code that's using the second one, that's what it means. All right, this is where the bone of contention. I've very boldly stated this. And we've had people online going, well, no, yeah. Um, Are you referring to Tommy? Yes. <laughs> um, we write a template, we don't know what types it's gonna be instantiated with, right? That's sort of the point, is that we want to write this function that can be used with a whole variety of types, including types that haven't been invented yet, that someone else is gonna write later. Right, so we don't want to limit our code to only, only working with a sort of predefined list. That means that in general, the entire definition of a template, so not just the interface, but the body, bodies of functions as well, needs to go in the header, right? If you want it to work with all the you know, menagerie of types that are out there. Because the compiler needs to have the body available in order to do the type substitution in order to generate the code. Right? You can't do the type substitution if you can't see what it's got to type it, substitute into. Or a better way of putting it, in order to build something you need blueprints. Right? So if you've got this new migrate type that the author of the template didn't see, then the compiler needs to have the definition of all of migrate template in order to put my spangy type into it. Blueprints need to be available, and that means putting them in header files. So yes, there is a very limited set of cases where you would, you might want to have private put templates uh, bodies in uh, implementation files, but again, 99% of the time, templates go in headers. In fact, there are entire libraries, huge libraries, Boost has lots of them, that are defined entirely in headers. There's no implementation files at all. Um, which is great fun if you like sitting there watching your computer compiling code. <laughs> um, this is just a little technical note, just uh, again, I'll, I'll kind of rush through it a bit. But basically, um, when we create, say we create, we've, we have multiple implementation files that are compiled separately and then they're linked together. So I think we talked about this in one of the early weeks, the way. Uh, C++ programs are built, and C programs in fact. So each of your implementation files is usually given to the compiler separately in the build system, and then another program called the linker actually takes all these compiled object files and glues them together into a, an executable. Right, so what happens is, let's say you use a standard vector int in your first object file and the standard vector int in your second object file, all that code's gonna be repeated in both the output objects. Uh, and what the linker does, it sort of glues those together so there's only one copy of it in the final, um, in the final executable, something called weak symbols. It's really a technicality that you don't have to worry about. I just sort of put this in here just in case people were worried about it. 
Um, this is the same thing that the inline keyword does, for those who, who've seen that. Um, right. I'll crack on, it's getting late, isn't it? Right. So you've seen how to do this. We can instantiate a class. So if we have this class template, then we can instantiate it by putting the name in angle brackets. So M is a type, my class int. So if I if I were to type m.member, what is the type of m.member? Yeah, this int now, in this example. It's okay. absolutely it's int, yeah. So can everyone see why that is? Yeah, so when I've said that, this, the compiler's gonna substitute it int wherever it sees t. And so we get int member in there. Um, except I just noticed typing m.member would actually be an error because it's a class, so it's private. <laughs> and so Ollie went into uh, a bit more detail about this, but um, with function templates, you get this argument deduction, um, which saves you from having to. You can, the function templates, explicitly supply the arguments. You can. Um, but usually it's, it's nicer to let, let it deduce them for you. Uh, and again, C17, we have this feature called, uh, what is it, constructor template argument deduction, I think they're calling it now. Sounds about that. CTAD. Mm -hmm. It's a nifty, nifty uh, name for it. Um, again, if you're interested in this stuff, then the last kind of extension exercise for today. You can dive all the way into it and, uh, and, and learn about that. But for now, I'm going to shut up for a few minutes because we have more, more exercises. Um, so if you go and get this, clone this, um, you see the README, there are five different exercises. We only want to do number one at the moment. That's all right. Also, while everyone is working, if anyone did do the uh, inheritance exercise from last week, which I'm not going to expect anyone from anyone, but if they did, then I'll be happy to review it if that's the case. Try. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, this exercise one is along the same lines as what Ollie asked you to do converting something from a non-template into a template. Uh, this time you're doing it with a class template. Can you cheat? Can you cheat? Yeah. Look at my solutions branch. No, I use standard pair. You use what? Standard pair. No. Point. Just write your own pair. Inherit from it. <laughs> I like the way you think. Outside of the box. Yeah. Oh, yeah do you have any questions from uh, anyone? Um, I don't think it will. Yes. I mean, given that I showed a yeah. tough old one, if you want to get somebody who wants to get stupidly fancy, then uh, make, it, uh, make a specialised tough old anyway. Exercise five.
Oh, sorry. What's the thing with the user? What's the what's the goal with adding adding user defined deduction guys? Like, is it like prove that you can you can like make it convert a char star to a stood string or something? Yes, that's one use case. Another one is right. A vector's got a constructor that takes two iterators, and you can't without a deduction guide. You can't get the. No, no, I get that, but like, what's the what's the um, basically, I couldn't get it to work without it having a deduction guide. So. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, what's the What was the time she tried to pass it? Oh, okay. It was a string or something. I think I landed it. Oh, okay. That's why I was confused by it. Someone had a deduction guide to do what they were do what they were If anyone needs any help, then I'm available as well. Uh, yes. So we're almost there. Compare as well. So if you just scroll up. So we just need to write the word template. Yeah. Um, this guy does that. Yeah. Oh, uh, Masila. Yeah. Does it? Yeah. Oh, right. Well, I haven't seen that before, so that's why I was confused. Oh, so it's just. So I'm designing the auto hides the word template. Yeah. I haven't seen that before. I must have turned that off in the option. Yeah, there's a thing which is turned off. Yeah. Really complicated. You don't have to type it. Yeah. I'll use it. Yeah, so sorry, that's why I was confused. Yeah. So yeah, it looks like you've got it working. Um, 
options for them, right? Yeah, I, I found it the other day because it's yeah, really so um, are we allowed to open a translation of Sino? As long as you've got a license, or well, I think you can't still speak to the difference. So, as long as you've got a license, you can um, upgrade. Are we allowed to do an update on our Sino? Of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Initialization, you are bad, you should feel bad. <laughs> no, not, not in the constructor, no. The first and the second. Uh, Thank you. 
I think I've got to build it up and I'll just get to the fifth stage, right? That sounds it perfect. You yeah. have? Yeah, thanks. Ah. In big part. Okay. How are people getting on? Yeah, you, you, I'm used to you racing through these exercises. Like, no, really. I'm sure this is familiar. The short answer is I don't know. I can tell you how it works. I don't know why they chose that specifically. So I mean, I think it's so you can, it can literally tell, be able to tell the difference between whether it's um, on the type declaration or on the actual like continue or, or an expand. So whether it's declaring a type that's a parameter pack versus actually expanding the parameter pack. So for example, in the in the in the little thing I gave on, on God Bowl, um, you could see that you had, you know, obviously you have type name dot 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 arts, because that's the actual type itself, but then when you utilise it for the expansion, i.e. You know, in the parameter, you have args and and dot 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 arts, which is, which is obviously now an expansion, so I think probably the simplest way to look at it is if it's the declaration, it goes before, so the declaration of a parameter pack, that goes in front, and then when it's the utilization, or you know, the act of expansion, it goes afterwards. And obviously as you, like, you have to be careful about how it's used as well, so for example, um, just you just might... Not to put the pressure on you, Odin Holmes is watching us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what does Odin know about templates though? <laughs> Has he got something, or are you just saying he's watching? Hey, cool, don't play it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, how you expand is also something to take care of. So in my example, I'd use stood forward because I was passing that in to create the tuple. So specifically, you had stood forward. I called it with just just arcs, but then after the actual deck, you know, the actual call to stood func uh, stood forward. I add dot 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 after it. So what that's telling the compiler to do is generate a call to std function for every single parameter. So it's, so so if you were to read it out, if you know when the compiler expanded it internally, it'd look like all these tons of calls to std function with each parameter. Whereas if you'd put the dot 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 inside the call to std forward, it would be one call to std forward, and it would be passing it loads of arguments inside that call. Can you have a number of single parameters before the parameter pack? Yes, yes. and after. How uh, after? Ooh. And you can do after. It's yeah. Oh yeah, not always, but there's, there's um what's the thing? What's the rules? You can do it. I've done it. Yeah. I can't remember. Um let me think about that. Anyway. To move on. Shall we? Is everyone 
done done okay at that? I was looking around, most people seem to get the hang of it. So um, there's a branch, if you look at the GitHub repository, there's there are separate branches for solutions to each of the exercises uh, because they each of the exercises builds on the last one. So if you need help, if you need a hand, if you need help, um, the solutions are, are there to look at. Um, right, this is a bonus slide. So um, while he was talking about where you had to write type name, um, this is I added this literally as I was sitting there. So if it doesn't make much sense, that's why. Um, it's really small, isn't it? Sorry. I had to fit a lot on my one bonus slide. Uh, this says we can access a member type or a static member variable of a class with the, with the same syntax. So here we've got an example class. It has a static int i. And it has this type def, this member type called type, in this case, which I've set to float. Yes. Press, I, can control I don't think it works with the uh, no projecting. No. Yeah, it doesn't work with presentation. Um, so here we say example colon colon i, and that's referring to this thing. So example colon colon i is a value. And here, the second one, example colon colon type, is a type. Okay? So this class name colon colon thing is the same syntax. Sometimes it refers to a value, sometimes it refers to a type. Now in this case it's okay, the, com the compiler can look at this and go, okay, I know which one's which, and I can give you a, a proper error message. But, if instead of example here we just had t, a template parameter, when the compiler is first looking at the template, first, uh, before you've actually instantiated it, when it's just looking at the blueprints and saying, do these blueprints make sense? The compiler doesn't know if t colon colon i is a value or a type because it's the same syntax which is a bit of a problem so this can be i'm sorry this is so small like i say i just I squeezed it on at the last minute so we have this struct example two it's now a class template and it's got this thing it's t colon colon x star y now t here is a template parameter so if t colon colon x is a type, then this is fine. This is a valid thing, and it's a pointer declaration. So we're declaring a pointer to a t x named y, uh, uninitialized, which is bad, but still. Um, but on the other hand, if t colon colon x refers to a value, then actually this syntax is valid as well. It's a multiplication with some, you know, perhaps global variable called y or something. Right, so this, this is valid either way, and that's, that's a bit bad. So um, what happens is the compiler will assume that it's a value. If you, use, if you use this, so here, t is what's called a dependent name, because it depends, in this case, it's, it is the template parameter, but uh, it depends on what you're, you actually instantiate it with. Um, but sometimes you have to. So sometimes you have to tell it specifically when this member syntax refers to a type, and in that case, you have to use this type name. Um, in general, the compiler will tell you exactly when, when, and where you have to put this type name keyword in. Right. So this is a little bonus slide. Um, if it's just made you scratch your head and wonder what the hell dependent names are. Don't worry about it too much. because, Like I say, generally the compiler will tell you exactly where you need to put it. Um, yes, and then we get on to... There's a similar problem that sometimes you have to use a template keyword, but that's so complicated that uh, there's a really good answer in Stack Overflow if you ever run into that problem. Anyway, um, Writing member functions, this is one slide. One slide with bigger text this time, so you know it's not too bad. When we write, we can write member functions, we can write the definition in line, like in the class itself. Remember that? But we can also write, alternatively, we can write the definition out of line. And when we do that, we have to use this syntax. So we have return type, class name colon colon, 
member function name, and then its arguments, and then its implementation. So that's how you write a member function separately from the class. Everyone's seen that, right? Everyone remembers, either remembers that if you've been to these or you've seen that syntax before. Um, this is how you how you, you implement a member function outside of the class. Um, you can do this for templates as well. You can declare your member functions inside the class and then write the definitions later. And this is pretty useful if the, if the uh, implementation is really complicated. You, you want to have your class, the class interface that people are going to look at, you want that to be quite simple. And then you can put this horrible complicated implementation down at the bottom of the file. Um, So if we want to write this, if we want to do this for a template function, sorry, for a, a class template, what we have to do is again, we have to use the template keyword to introduce these names, to tell the compiler what T and U mean, and then we want to tell it, okay, now, this is return type, it's class template T U, and then member name. So it's exactly the same as we had before, except that we have to put these, sorry, <coughs> Sorry, uh, except we have to tell it we're, we're writing an implementation for a class template. Does that make sense? Yeah? Hey, just a question. Did you yeah. say earlier that we cannot use a, a, a generic parameter as a return type? Did you say you, that? No, no you, you absolutely can. So you could have this could return type T, okay. for example, that would be fine. Right. Um, Right, so this is this is a pretty common thing to do. And I want you to practice doing this. So that's exactly what exercise two is. And it shouldn't take too long because you all seem to know what you're doing. Um, sorry? Uh, yeah, actually there's a water cooler there. I'm not going to call it, it's got lots of electronics in there. <laughs> This is the same URL, so I'm, I'm just going to I'm going to go back to the. Uh, 
Um, so it turns out it's just, uh, it's not the actual return statement, but it's just the type of return. Um, the stream link anywhere? Yeah. It was, it was. And it's on our website. I posted it on just Skype. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. On Twitter. Uh, so Twitter, Twitter is on Slack. Our website. The, uh, on the Slack um, or possibly as well. Do you need to get any const? Uh, so yeah, the well. const is part of the definition. Yes. So this comes so on part of the term. No, I didn't put it. <coughs> oh, shit, OK. But they put it on Twitter and on our website. What's the Twitter? I don't know the Twitter. Twitter, our Twitter, so in my Twitter, <coughs> it, uh, with, the, with the link and it was retweeted by quite a few people. Is that somebody that had trouble finding? No, I'm looking for it. <laughs> ah, okay. If you open, open, open your, and click on my xxdms, yes, at xxdms, you'll find me, and you'll find all, it was retweeted by uh, <laughs> yeah. Are you ex Are you at xxdms? Yeah, and it was as well by Rob Irving. Introduced the names to you. And lots of other people. Cool, okay. Uh, the problem is, Change print pair. Uh, Sorry? I meant to change this as well, print. Well, it's not template. Oh, you're doing it size one as well? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not doing it size one. That was I oh, I skipped. I kind of skipped it. Size one. Just skipped it. Okay, fine. So, well, I've got a template print pair then, haven't I? Yes. Okay. okay. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Sorry. That was what I yeah. When we had the, we had the two slides here. Yeah. So you've just got the pair. Yeah. 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 Constructor as well, don't forget to do constructor.
you two very quiet in that corner. Does that mean it's all like you've done it and you're just like catching up on Facebook or something? Good. Sorry, I'm 
Yeah, I'm just talking about No, I'm, I'm yeah. really impressed with all this. Because uh, this is your first session, right? My first session? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> but it's only your second, so uh, yeah. This is your second session. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
longer than I was going to for that because uh, the next session was going to be quite long we weren't going to have time because they nearly nine o'clock and they like us to wrap up kind of promptly <coughs> um, so there are oh it doesn't want to work got a whole ton of more slides all about specializations da, 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 da. So should we continue with the, the next class with the, um, with so I was going to say do people want me to continue with this next time or do we want to go on to something new? Do we want to go back to things? How about both? Sorry? How about both? 
a vote on it. Vote on it. <laughs> I mean, I would say, let, let's... Con uh, yeah, my, my advice, yeah. let's finish this subject, yes, and then uh, we can decide. Now, <laughs> uh, just 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 a reminder is yes, to, to everybody if you if everybody uh, the online people as well please send me an email yes uh, <coughs> you know you should know my email address if not ask me on uh, slack and I'll give you uh, put this in a subject line to feedback <laughs> oh yeah it's here as well put feedback <coughs> feedback and then tell me when if the class was too easy, too difficult, was just right, <coughs> what would you like to, to, to learn? I know it's annoying, I know it's, it's, it's not pleasant, but please do spend a couple of minutes because that really makes, will make the difference. Now, the, the thing is which I, <coughs> I mentioned, the ideas which I have, is to, to try to uh, change a little bit of format. So, give, let's say, 10 minutes explanation, and then, <laughs> let's say one or two or three exercises, 10 minute explanation a bit further and go maybe this way. But I need to know whether this is something you want. If it's only me, it's no point. <coughs> yeah, we, we cannot cater for the people on the, 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 the most extreme, the, 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 the most basic and the most advanced, yes? Because that doesn't work. We need to cater for the, for the group as, as well. Doesn't matter who it is, even if it's me or anybody else, yes? I'm not better than anyone else here, I'm sane. So I need to know from you. So please do send me the, the feedback. Uh, and after the class, we're going to Bierschenke. It's a, it's a, it's a pub nearby. If, you, if, you, if you've never been, you're very welcome to come. The online people as well. Uh, if not, we'll drink a toast for you. Uh, and obviously, we will pay our respect for these two guys and they will get the runs on us. Uh, so that's all from me and see you next week we'll go to the Oli office and if, if we get confirmation check the website but definitely week after that we're back and hopefully we'll be permanently in this in this room uh, hopefully forever thanks very much these guys Thank you. now does anybody knows how to finish yeah, that this on the <laughs> Do we stop, 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 stop streaming and will that stop. record? Will that keep the recording? Yeah. Yeah? I need them now.